Savages, Barbarians, Civilised Men Translated by Robert Hurley and Mark Seen The inscribing socius If the universe all comes at the end The body without organs of desiring production Under the conditions determined by an apparently victorious capitalism Where do we find enough infants for generating universal history? Desiring production also exists from the beginning There is desiring production from the moment there is production and reproduction But in a very precise sense it is true that pre-capitalist social machines are inherent in desire. They code it, they code the flows of desire. To code desire and the fear, the anguish of decoded flows, is the business of the socius. As we shall see, capitalism is the only social machine that is constructed on the basis of decoded flows, substitute for intrinsic codes and an axiomatic of abstract quantities in the form of money. Capitalism therefore liberates the flows of desire, but under the social conditions that define its limit and the possibility, its own dissolution, so that it is constantly opposing with all this air expurgated strength the strength of the movement that derives it towards this limit. At capitalism's limit, the deteriorated socius gives way into the body without organs, and the decoded flows and throw themselves into desiring production. Hence, it is to correct, to retrospectively understand all history to the light of capitalism, in the light of capitalism, provided that the rules formulated by Marx followed exactly. First of all, universal history is the history of contingencies and not the history of necessity. Ruptures and limits and not continuity. For great accidents were necessary and amazing encounters that could have happened elsewhere before or might have never happened in order for the flows to escape coding and escaping to nonetheless fashion a new machine bearing the determinations of the capitalist socius. Thus the encounter between private property and commodity production which presents itself, however, as two quite distinct forms of decoding by privatisation and by abstraction. Or from the view of private property itself, the encounter between convertible wealth owned by capitalists and flow of workers possessing more than their labour capacity. Here again, two distinct forms of deterioratization. In a sense, capitalism has haunted all forms of society, but haunts them as their terrifying nightmare. It is the dread they feel of a flow that would elude their codes. Then again, if we say that capitalism determines the conditions and the possibility of a universal history, this is true only as far as capitalism has to deal with uh, essentially of its own limit, its own destruction. As Marx says, in so far as it's capable of self-criticism, at least to a certain point, the point where the limit appears in the very mo movement that counteracts the tendency. In a word, universal history is not only retrospective, it's also contingent, similar, singular, ironic and critical. The Earth is the primitive, savage unity of desire and production. If the Earth is not merely the multiple and divided object of labour, it is also the unique indivisible entity, the full body that falls back on the forces of production and appropriates them for its own as the natural or divine precondition. While the ground can be the productive element and the result of appropriation, the earth is the great un unengendered stasis, the element superior to production that conditions the common appropriation and utilisation of the ground. It is the surface on which the whole process of production is inscribed, on which the forces and means of labour are recorded, and the ancients and the products distributed. It appears here as a quasi uh, cause of production and the object of desire. It is on the earth that desire becomes bound to its own repression. The territorial machine is therefore the first form of socius, the machine of primitive inscription, the mega machine that covers a social field. It is not to be confused with technical machine. In the simplest so-called manual forms, a technical machine already implies an acting, a transmitting, or even a driving element that is non-human and that extends man's strength and allows for certain disengagement from him. The social machine, in contrast, has men for its parts, even if you view them with their machines and integrate with them, internalise them in an institutional model at every stage of action, transmission and uh, metocracy, hence the social machine fo uh, fashions a memory without which there would be no synergy of man and his technical machines. The latter do not in fact contain the conditions for the reproduction of the process, they point to the social machines that condition and organise them, but also limit and inhibit their development. It will be necessary to await capitalism to find a semi-autonomous organisation of technical production that tends to appropriate uh, memory and reproduction, and thereby modifies the forms of exploitation by man. But as a matter of fact, the organization, this organisation presupposes the dismantling of the great social machines that predated it, preceded it. The same machine can be both technical and social, but only when <coughs> viewed from a different perspective. 
For example, the clock as a technical machine for measuring uniform time, and as a social machine for reproducing uh, canonic hours and for assuring order in the city. When Lewis Mumford coins the word mega machine to designate the social machine as a collective entity, he is literally correct, though he limits its application to the bar barbarian despotic institution. If more or less in agreement with Rouleau's classic definition, one can consider the machines to be the combination of solid elements, each having its own social, uh, specialized function and operating under human control in order to transmit a movement and perform a task. Then the human machine was indeed a true machine. The social machine is literally a machine, irrespective of any metaphor, in so much as it exhibits an immobile motor and undertakes a variety of interventions. Flows are set apart, elements are detached from a train, and portions of the tasks to be performed are distributed. Coding the flow implies all these operations. This is the social machine's social, uh, supreme task, insofar as a, a, a portioning of production corresponds to extractions from the chain resulting in a residual share for each member in a global system of desire and destiny that organizes the production of production, the production of recording and the production of consumption, flows of women and children, fl flows of herds and seed, sperm flows, flows of shit, menstrual flows, nothing must escape coding. The primitive territorial machine with its immobile mode to the earth is already a social machine, a mega machine that codes the flows of productions, the flows of means of production, of producers and consumers, the full body of the earth, goddess Earth gathers to itself the cultivable cultiv cultiv species, the agricultural implements, and the human organs. Mayor Fortz makes a passing remark that is joyous and refreshingly sound. The circulation of women is not the problem. A woman circulates herself. She is not at one's disposal, but with judicial rights governing uh, pro pro progenitor are determined for the profit of a specific person. We see no reason in fact for accepting the postulate postulate that underlies exchanges notions of society. Society is not, first of all, a milieu for exchange where the essential would be to circulate, or cause to circulate, but rather a socius of inscription where the essential thing is to be marked and to and to be marked. Uh, there is circulation only if inscription re requires or permits it. This method of the primitive territorial machine is in a sense a collective investment of the organs, but flows are coded only to the extent that the organs capable respectively of producing and breaking them are themselves in circles. In stewed as partial objects distributed on the socius and attached to it. A mask is such an institution of organs. Intuit uh, initi initiation societies compose the pieces of a body which are at the same time sensory organs, anatomical parts and joints. Prohibitions see, not speak of, apply to those who, in a given state or on a given occasion, are deprived of the right to enjoy a collectively invested organ. The mythologies sing of organs, partial objects, and their relations to a full body that repel or attract them. Reginas, vaginas, rivets on the woman's body, an immense penis shared by the men, on an independent anus that assigns itself a body without an anus, a gourmet story begins. When the mouth was dead, the other parts of the body were consulted to see which of them would take charge of the burial. The unities in question never found in person, but rather in series which determine the connections, disjunctions and conjunctions of organs. That is why fantasies are group fantasies. It is the collective investment of the organs that plugs desire into the socius and assembles a social production and desiring production into a whole of the earth. Our modern societies have instead undertaken a vast privatisation, privatisation of the organs to the decoding of flows that have become abstract. The first organ is to suffer, to suffer privatisation, removal from the social field was the anus. It was the anus that offered itself as a model for the privatisation at the same time as money came to express the flow's new state of abstraction. Hence the relative state of psychoanalytical remarks concern, psychoanalytic remarks concerning the anal nature of monetary economy. But the logical order is the following. The substitution of abstract quantity for the coded flows, the resulting collective disinvestment of the organs on the model of the anus. The constitution of private per persons and individual centres of organs and functions derived from the abstract quantity. One is even compelled to say that while in our societies the penis has occupied the position of a detached object, distributing lack to the bo persons of both sexes and ordering them using the uh, epidal triangle, it's the anus that in this manner detaches. It is the anus that removes and sublimates the penis of anything of uh, aff affibone and will constitute the phallus. Sublimination is profoundly linked to anality. This is not to say that the latter uh, furnishes the materials be sublimated for want of another use. Anality does not present a lower requiring conversion to a higher. It is the anus itself that ascends on higher under the conditions which you must analyse. 
of its removal from the field, conditions that are not pre presupposed sublimation, since from the contrary sublimation results from them. It is not the anal that presents itself for sublimation, it is sublimation that is an entirety that is anal. Moreover, the simplest critique of sublimation is the fact that it does not by any means rescue us from the shit, only the mind is capable of shitting. Anality is all the greater once the anus is disinvested. The libido is indeed the essence of desire, but when the libido becomes abstract quantity, the elevated and dis disinvested anus produces the global persons of the specific egos that serve the same quantity as units of measure. Artois expresses it well. This dead rat's eight ass suspended from the ceiling of the sky, whence issues the daddy mommy me triangle. Yuri from mother father of a frantic anality, whose child is only an angle. This kind of covering internally banging on what someone hanging on with something that is the self. The whole of Oedipus is anal and implies an in, but individual and overinvestment of the organ to compensate for its collective disinvestment. That is why the commentator is most favourable to the universal universality of Oedipus, recognise nonetheless that one does not encounter in primitive societies any of the mechanisms or any of the attitudes that make it a reality in our society. No superego, no guilt. No identification of a specific ego with global persons, but group identify identifications that are always partial, following the compact uh, agglutinated series of ancestors and a fragmented series of companions and cousins. No anality though, or rather because there is a collectively invested anus, what remains then for the making of Oedipus, the structure, that is to say, an unrealized potentiality. Are we to believe that a universal Oedipus haunts all societies, but exactly as capitalism haunts them, that is to say, as the nightmares and the anxious foreboding of what might result from the decoding of flows and the collective disinvestment of organs, the becoming abstract of the flows and desire and the becoming private of the organs? The primitive territorial machine code flows in best organs and marks bodies to such a degree that circulating exchanging is a secondary activity in comparison with the tasks that sums up all the others, marking bodies, which are the Earth's products. The essence of the recording, in, uh, recording inscribing socius insofar as it lays claims to the productive forces and dis, uh, distributes the agents of production residing in these operations, tattooing, exercising, incising, carving, scarifying, mutilating, encircling and initiating. Nietzsche thus defined the morality of Moors. The labour performed by man himself during the greater part of the existence of the human race, his prehistoric labour, a system of evaluations possessing the force of law concerning the various members and parts of the body. Not only is the criminal deprived of organs according to a regime of collective investment uh, investments, not only is the one who has to be eaten eaten according to social reasons exact as those followers in carving up and appropriating a steer, where the man who enjoys the full exercise of his rights and duties has his whole body marked into a regime that consigns his organs and their exercise to the collectivity. The privatisation of the organs, or organs will only begin with the shame felt by man at the sight of man. For it is a founding act that the organs be hewn as the socius, and that the uh, flows run over its surf surface, through which man ceases to be a biological organism, through which uh, man ceases to be a biological organism and becomes a full body and earth, to which his organs become attached. Where they are attracted, repelled, um, miracleated, following the requirements of the socius. Nietzsche says it is a matter of creating a memory for man and a man who is constituted by means of an active faculty of a forgetting, ublu, by means of a repression or biological memory must create an other memory, one that is collective, a memory of words, paroles, and no longer a memory of things, a memory of signs, and no longer of effects. This organization, uh, which traces its signs directly on the body, constitutes a system of cruelty, a terrible alphabet. Perhaps indeed there is nothing more fearful and canny in the whole prehistory of man than his men menotechnics. Men, man could never do without blood, tor torture and sacrifice when he felt the need to create a memory of himself. The most dreadful sacrifices and pledges, the most repulsive mutilations, the cruelest rites of all the religious cults. One is only to look at our former uh, codes of punishments to understand what effort it costs the earth to breed a nation of thinkers. Cruelty has nothing to do with Ill, some ill-defined or natural violence that might be commissioned to explain the history of mankind. Cruelty is the movement of culture that is realised and bodies and inscribed on them, belabouring them. This is what cruelty means. This culture is not the movement of ideology. On the contrary, it forcibly injects production into desire, and conversely, it forcibly inserts desire into social production and reproduction. For even death, punishment and torture are desired, and are instances of production compare the history of fatalism. It makes men or their organs as the parts and wheels of the social machine. 
The sign is the position of desire, but the first signs are the total board of signs that plant their flags and bodies. And if one wants to call this inscription in naked flesh writing, then it must be said that speech in fact presupposes writing. And that it is this cruel system of inscribed signs that renders man capable of language and gives him memory of the spoken word. 2. The primitive territorial machine. The notion of territorial 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 the notion of territoriality merely appears ambiguous. For if it is taken to mean a principle of residence or of ge geographic distribution, it is obvious that the primitive social machine is not territorial. Only the apparatus of the state will be territorial in this sense, because following Engel's formula, it subdivides not the people but the territory, and substitutes a geographic organization for the organization of gens. Yet even where kinship seems to predominate over the earth, it is now not difficult to show the importance of local ties. This is because the primitive machine subdivides people but does so on an indivisible earth where the con uh, connective, disjunctive and conjunctive relations of each section are inscribed with the other relations. Thus, for example, the coexistence of um, complementary of the section chief and the guardian of the earth. When the division extends to the earth itself by virtue of an administration that is landed and resident residential, this can be regarded as a promotion uh, of territorial, territorial, territoriality. On the contrary, it is rather the effect of the first great movement of deterritorialization on the primitive communes. The imminent unity of the earth as the immobile motor gives way to the transcendent unity of an altogether different nature, the unity of the state. The full body is no longer that of the earth, it is the full body of the despot, the ungendered, unengendered, which went which now takes charge of the fertility of the soil as well as the rain from the sky and the general appropriation of the productive forces. Hence, the savage primitive socius was indeed the only territorial machine in the strict sense of the term, and the functioning of such a machine consists in the order. The cleansing of alliance and fil filiation, de declining the lineages on the body of the earth there before there is a state. If decleansation characterises the primitive machine, it is because it is not possible to more possible simply to deduce alliance from fil filiation, the alliances from the filative lines. It would be erroneous, uh, erroneous to suggest to you an alliance no more than an in indiv individuating power over the persons of lineages. It produces instead of a generalised generalised disminguality. The you know, leech cites cases of very diverse matrimonial figures where regimes where no difference in Filiation can be inferred along the corresponding groups. In many analyses, the stress has been upon ties with the uh, ulinial corporation or between different corporations linked by ties of common descent. The structural ties deriving from marriage between members of different corporations have been largely ignored, so all else assimilated into the all important descent concepts. Thus, Fortes, 1953, while recognizing that ties of affinity of comparable importance to ties of descent, Disguises the former under the expression complementary filiation. The essence of the concept, which resembles the Roman distinction between agnation and cognation, is that any ego is related to the kinsman of his two parents because he is a descendant of both parents, not because his parents were married. However, the cross ties linking the different pat uh, patrilineages lineages literally, literally are not felt by the people themselves to be of the nature of descent. The continuity of the structure virtually through time is adequately expressed through the agnatic transition of a pat patrilineage name, but the continuity of this structure laterally is not so expressed. Instead, it is maintained by a continuing chain of debt relationships of an economic kind. It is the existence of those outstanding debts which assert the continuance of an affernal relationship. Flulation is administrative and hierarchical, but alliance is political and economic, and that expresses power therefore as it is not flues the hierarchy and economy be deduced from it. And the economy, insofar as it is not identical with administration, filiation and alliance are like the two forms of primitive capital, fixed, uh, fixed capital or filiative stock, and circulating capital or mobile blocks of debt. There are two memories that correspond to them: the one biofilarative, filiative, the other a member of alliance and of words. While production is recorded in a network of filarative disjunctions on the socius, the connections of labour still much detach themselves from the productive process and pass into element of recording that appropriates them for itself as causes cause. But it can accomplish that only by reclaiming the connect co connective regime for its own in the form of affinal tire or pairing of persons that is comparable with the disjunctions of filiation. It is in this sense that the economy goes by way of alliance in the production of children. 
The child is inscribed in relation to the disjunctive lines of his mother or father or mother, but inversely the disjunctive lines inscribe it only through a connection represented by the marriage of the father and the mother. At no time, therefore, does alliance derive from filiation, but through from an essentially open cycle where the socius acts on production, where a production acts reacts on the socius. Marxists are right to remind us that if kinship is dominant in primitive society, it is determined as dominant by economic and political factors. And if filiation expresses what is dominant while being itself determined, alliance expresses what is determinant, or rather the return of the determinant in the determinant system of dominance. That is why it is essential to take into consideration how ties of alliance combined concretely with relations of filiation or on a given territorial service. Leach has specifically underscored the imp imp importance of local lineages insofar as they are uh, differentiated from lineages of filiation, and so far as they operate at the level of small segments. It is these groups of men residing in the same area or neighbouring areas who would arrange marriages and shape concrete reality to a much greater extent, down through the systems of filiation and the abstract matrimonial classes. A kinship system is not a structure but a practice, a praxis, a, mef a method and even a strategy. Louise Berv, analysing a relationship of uh, alliance, Louis, sorry, Louis Berv, analysing a relationship of alliance and hierarchy, shows convincingly that a village in intervenes as a third party to between matrimonial connections between elements that the denotations of two moralities would forbid from the strict point of structure. For the third term must be interpreted more as a method than as a two structural element. Every time one interprets kinship relations to the primitive commune in terms of a structure unfolding in the mind, one relapses into the ideology of large segments that makes alliance depend on the major filiation, and that finds And that finds contradicted that finds itself contradicted by practice. It is never easy to ask if there exists in the asymmetrical systems of alliance in a fundamental tendency between don generalized exchange, that is to say towards the closing of the cycle. I have been able, able to find anything of this that nature amongst the Miru. Everyone behaves as if you were ignorant of the com compensation that would result from the closing of the circle cycle, and everyone stresses the relationship of asymmetry emphasizing the creator debtor behaviour. A kinship system only appears close to the context that is severed from political and economic references that keep it open and that make alliance between other than an arrangement of matrimonial classes and philosophical lineages. It is the same for the whole project of coding the flows. How does one uh, ensure reciprocal ad adaptation the respected embrace of a signifying chain of flows production? The great nomad hunter follows the flows exhausting place and moves on with them to another place. He reproduces in an accelerated fashion his entire filiation and contracts it to into a point that keeps in the direct relation with the ancestor or the god. Pierre Clos des, describes a solitary hunter who becomes identical with his force and his destiny and delivers his song in a language that becomes increasingly rapid and distorted. Me, 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 I am a powerful nature, a nature in sense and aggressive. Such are the two characteristics of the hunter, the great paranoic of the bush or the forest. Real displacement with the flows and direct filiation with the god. It has nothing to do with the nature of nomadic space, where the full body of the socius is as if so adjacent to production. It has not yet brought production under its sway. The space of the encampment remains adjacent to that of the forest. It is constantly reproduced in the process of production, but has not yet appropriated this process. The apparent objective movement of an inscription has not yet suppressed the real movement of nomadism. But pure nomad does not exist. There is always an, already an encampment where it is a matter of stocking, however little, and where it is a matter of inscribing and allocating, of marrying and feeding oneself. Clausterez shows well enough among the uh, Goyaka the connection between the hunters and the living animals is succeeded to the encampment by disjunction between the dead animals and the hunters. A disjunction similar to an incest prohibition, since a hunter cannot consume his own kill. In short, as we shall see elsewhere, there is always a pervert who succeeds to paranoia or accompanies him. Sometimes the same man in two situations, the bush paranoic and the village pervert. Once the socius becomes fixed, falling back on the productive forces and appropriating them for its own, the problem of coding can no longer be resolved by the uh, similarity of a displacement from, from the standpoint of the flows and an uh, accelerated reproduction from the standpoint of the chain. The flows must be the object of deductions that cons uh, constitute a 
minimum stock and the signifying chambers for the object of attachments that constitutes a minimum of meditations. A flow is coded in the supplier's detachments from the chain and deductions from the flows are affected in, aff affected in correspondence, united in a mutual and base. And this is already the high preserve activity of local group groups who arrange marriages on the surface of all the primitive territoriality, um, normal or non-pathological perversity, as Henry I would say, referring to other cases where a psychic work of selection, refinement and calculation was manifested. And that is the case from the start, since there does not exist a pure nomadic in the afford of the satisfaction of drifting with the flows and singing direct filiation, but always a socius wanting to bear down, waiting to bear down, always deducting and detaching. The flow deductions consummate a filarative stock in the signifying chamber. Inversely, the detachments from the chain constitute mobile debts of reliance to guide and direct the flows. On the blanket that serves as a familial stock, a final stones or carries are made to circulate. There is a sort of vast circle of flows productions and chains of inscription and a lesser cycle between the flocks, uh, stocks of filiation that connect or encast the flows and the blocks of alliance that cause the chains to flow. The sentence at the same time flow of production and chain of inscription, stock of filiation and fluxion of reliance. Everything takes place as though stock constituted the surface energy of inscription or recording. The potential energy of the apparent movement but that is the actual direction of the movement, a kinetic engine that is determined by the respective paths of the gifts and uh, counter gifts of the surface. Among the cooler, the circulation of necklaces and bracelets come to a standstill in certain places, on certain occasions so that a stock may be reformed. There are no productive connections without disjunctions of filiation that appropriate them, but there are no disjunctions of filiation that do not constitute lateral connections across the alliances and pairings of persons. Not only the flows and the chains, but the fixed stocks and the mobile debts. Insofar as they turn imply re uh, relations between chains and flows in both directions. Are in the state of perpetual relativity. Their elements vary. Women, consumer goods, ritual objects, rights, prestige and status. If one postulates that somewhere there has to be a kind of equilibrium of prices, one is compelled to see the manifest disequilibrium of the relations uh, pathological consequence, which one explains by saying that the supposedly closed system extends in one direction. No, the prestations uh, become wider and more complex. But such a conception is in contradiction with the primitive cold economy, which is about nest investment, without money and market, and without exchanges, commodity relations. The mainspring of such an economy is veritable surplus value of code. Each detachment from the chain produces on one side or on the other flows production, phenomena of excess and deficiency, phenomena of lack and accumulation which will be compensated for by non-exchangeable elements of the acquired prestige or distributed consumption type. Chief com converts this perishable wealth into imperishable prestige through the medium of uh, spectacular feasting. The ultimate consumers are in this way the original producers. Surplus value of code is a primitive form of surplus value in so much as it corresponds to Mouse's celebrated formula, the spirit of the thing given, or the force of circumstance that requires that gifts be reciprocated with interest, being territorial signs of desire and power, and principles of abundance and the uh, fluctuations of wealth. Far from being a pathological consequence, the disequilibrium of func is functional and fundamental. Far from being the extension of a system that is the first closed, the opening is primary, found in the heterogeneity of the elements that compose the prisations and the compensate for the disequilibrium by displacing it. In short, the detachment from the signifying train in accordance with the relations of alliance and gender surplus values occurs at the end of the level of flows, whence derive differences in state between the filarative lines, for example, the superior or inferior ramps of the givers and receivers of wives. The surplus value of code carries out the diverse operations of the primitive territorial machine, detaching segments from the train, organising selections by the flows, and advocate, allocating the portions due each person. The idea that primitive societies have no history there, that they are dominated by archetypes and their repetition, is especially weak and inadequate. The idea was not conceived by ethnologists or by uh, ideologists in the service of a tragic Jude Christian consciousness that they wish to discredit with the invention of history. If what is called history is a dynamic and ocean so social reality in a state of functional disequilibrium or an oscillating equilibrium, unstable and always compensated, comprising not only institutionalized conflicts but conflicts that generate changes, revolts, ruptures, and schisms, then uh, primitive societies are fully inside history and far distinct from the 
stability or even from the harmony attributed to them in the name of primacy of a unanimous group. The presence of history in every social machine plainly appears in the disharmonies that Levi Strauss says, where the unmistakable stamp of time elapsed. It is true that there are several ways to interpret such disharmonies, ideally by the gap between the real institution and the assumed ideal model, morally be invoking a structural bond between law and transgression. Physically, as though it is a question of attrition that would mean cause the social machines to lose its capacity to wield its materials. But here too it seems that the correct interpretation would be above all and functional. It is in order to function that a social machine must not function well. This means showing precisely with regard to the segmentary system, which was always designed to constitute itself on its own ruins. And likewise for the organisation of the political function in these systems, which in effect is exercised only by indicating its own impotence. Ethnologists are constantly saying that kinship rules are either applied nor applicable to real marriages, not because these rules are idea, but rather because they determine critical points where the apparatus starts up again, providing it is blocked and where it is necessary to place itself in a negative relation to a group. Here it has become apparent that the social machine is identical with the desiring machine. The social machine's limit is not attrition, but rather its misfirings. It can operate only by fits and starts, by grinding and breaking down its spasms of minor explosions. The disjunctions uh, this functions are an essential element of its very ability to function, which is not the least important part of the system of cruelty. The death of a social machine has never been heralded by disharmony or dysfunction. On the contrary, social machines make a habit of feeding on the contradictions they give rise to, on the crises they provoke, on the anxieties they engender, on the infernal operations they regenerate. Capitalism has learned this and has ceased doubting itself. While even socialists have abandoned belief in the possibility of capital's natural death by, by attrition, no one has died from contradictions, and the more it breaks down, the more it schizophrenizes, the better it works the American way. But this is already the point of view required, given a chance change of perspective for examining the primitive socius, the territorial machine for de declining alliances and filarations. The machine is segmentary because, though it's double apparatus of tri tribe and lineage, it cuts up segments of varying lengths. Genealogical affiliative units of major, minor, and uh, minimal lineages with the hierarchy, their respective chiefs, their elders who guard their stocks and organize marriages, territorial tribal units, primary, secondary, and tertiary sections, also having their dominant roles in their alliances. The point of separation between the tribal sections becomes the point of divergence in the clan structure of the lineages associated with each uh, section. For if we've seen, clans and their lineages are not uh, distinct corporate groups but embodied in local communities which they uh, function structurally. The two systems inter uh, intersect, each segment being associated with the flows and the chains, with the stock flows and the passing flows, with selections from the flows and detachments from the chains. Certain production projects execute in the framework of the tribal system, others in the framework of the lineage system. The variability and relativity of the segments are responsible for all sorts of penetrations between the inalienable an 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 elements of filiation and the mobile el elements of alliance. This is explained by the fact that the length of each segment or even its existence as such is determined only by its opposition to each segment's a series of interrelated segments stages. The segmentary machine mixes rivalries, conflicts and ruptures for the variations of filiation the function, the fluctuations of alliance. The whole system revolves between two poles that are fusion through opposition to other groups and that of schism through the constant formation of new lineages aspiring to independence and capitalization of alliances and filiation. From one point to the other, all the misfirings and failures in the system that is constantly reborn 